Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 35 of MCS 572. Uh, so this is our second lecture on applications, uh, in a way in the very end of the course, but in some sense this is a fused uh, course where we combine topics of parallel computing with numerical analysis here in this lecture in particular numerical linear algebra and then also software scientific software so at the at the end of the lecture i will uh, provide some very short demonstrations of how standard software is applied so the central message is that if you have an application then uh, please consider uh, using the standard software packages. Uh, throughout this course, we have seen various uh, small snippets of code to experiment with the concepts that we have covered. In this part of the course, we would actually go more towards the uh, standard scientific software packages. Uh, this lecture is also intended to be self-contained um, so parallel gaussian elimination uh, gaussian elimination also stands for row reduction uh, i will start uh, slowly by deriving the formulas and then uh, we will go into the tiling of the uh, lu factorization the tiled algorithms uh, algorithms Okay, so what is the problem now? Uh, so we want to solve a linear system and we are not going to do this by hand, uh, but we are going to factor the matrix. Uh, so when it comes to solving linear systems on a computer, we are going to think in terms of matrix factorizations. So the matrix A is going to be written as a product of two triangular matrices, a lower triangular matrix L, an upper triangular matrix U, and that transforms the problem, the problem of solving a system of linear equations, here we assume as many equations as unknowns, n linear equations, n unknowns, um, the problem of solving that n-dimensional problem is then translated into doing two substitutions, uh, or at least I should say uh, the problem is reduced to solving two triangular systems, which we have covered before. So we can uh, consider the solving of triangular systems done. Um, from the perspective of computational complexity, uh, solving a triangular system can be done at a, at a cost uh, that is n times less than the factorization. So if you have a 1000 by 1000 matrix, then it means that you can solve a triangular system 1000 times faster. Um, the other thing is that we have uh, to apply partial pivoting. Uh, so if there are uh, zeros on the diagonal or very small numbers on the diagonal, then doing the row reduction would leave, lead to uh, ad either catastrophic failure, division by zero if it, there is an exact zero, but also would lead to very huge numbers. Uh, so in, of course, in numerical analysis, we make a big point that uh, if we do not pivot, uh, then actually the results may uh, be very inaccurate or completely wrong. Okay, um, here is a picture of the uh, algorithm. So the algorithm proceeds column-wise. So we start by looking in the first column for the largest element, and uh, that will be the pivot. Uh, so we will actually divide by this largest element to eliminate uh, below the diagonal. Um, 
So you see the progression of this column-wise algorithm. So uh, there is a double loop uh, there. Actually, there is a double loop in the third step. Uh, but then there is also the first loop. Uh, so the main loop that runs over the columns. Uh, we have then ro uh, running over the rows. And then again, uh, during the elimination, we have another column update. Um, so you can see that this is an algorithm that is going to be cubic, cubic in the dimension n. So we have n to the power 3 operations. So this is a very computationally intensive uh, computation. Um, the pivoting may uh, bother us a little bit for now. Uh, so here is uh, a variation of the LU factorization. It's called Koleski factorization. And it applies to symmetric matrices. So if you swap rows with columns, you have the same matrix. Uh, it applies to positive semi-definite matrices. Uh, what this means is that these matrices arise as uh, the de in the definition of quadratic forms. So think about a paraboloid uh, with a unique uh, minimum. So you have a parabola in the plane. Uh, in space, you have, in three space, you have a paraboloid. So think about a wine glass, for example. Uh, there is a unique minimum. So for any vector, the quadratic form is turns out to be positive. Because of these two properties, uh, it turns out that you can work twice as fast. So the upper triangular part of the LU factorization is the transpose of the L matrix. The um, And then the second part, and this is because of this positive semi-definite uh, property, no pivoting is needed. So that means that you have uh, a faster and also a less complicated algorithm. So it's just very good that we start with that algorithm. And here you see the in-place uh, Koleski factorization. Uh, so we have the um, operations uh, in place. So the matrix A, uh, its lower triangular part is replaced by the L factorization. In some sense, if you store the entire matrix A because it is symmetric, you do actually not lose any information of this matrix. Uh, because you can recover uh, the matrix A from the transpose, and um, I should say that the diagonal elements uh, most likely need to be uh, stored. Uh, if you do not like square roots, uh, then there is also an L, the L transpose decomposition where uh, the L is a strictly lower triangle, triangular matrix, so with zero on the diagonal, where the diagonal elements are stored at a diagonal matrix D. So that's a variation if you do not like to take square roots. Uh, okay, um, so the pseudocode on the previous slide is also column-oriented. Um, as we have encountered already multiple times in this um, lecture, in, in, in this course, uh, with the matrix matrix multiplication, we actually do not really work with rows and columns, but we work with tiles uh, or blocked matrices. Um, so we have a tile size B, and uh, now we consider the matrix A as a matrix of matrices. So instead of having numbers on the entries, we have uh, B by B blocks matrices. Um, as before, um, the size of these matrices will determine on the size of the caches. Um, or if you think about uh, a GPU, on the sizes of the shared memories. 
uh, we will load the matrix just block by block or tiled by tiled in the caches uh, when we think about parallel shared memory or when we um, think about uh, GPU acceleration we will load it into shared memory so uh, the even though this is a very computationally intensive uh, operation, the game is actually now to uh, try to optimize uh, the data movements. Um, and uh, we will apply the basic building blocks. Uh, so here you see that there are three... So the, the, the pseudo code is actually now rewritten in a tiled version and in and we have three different uh, building blocks so we have the koleski factorization on one of the tiles on the diagonal tile and then we have the um, multiplication of the so the 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 computation of the other uh, multipliers so the update with the inverse of the Koleski factorization. So that's the second um, basic building blocks. And then uh, we have the reduction. And you can still recognize the cubic cost, but now the cubic cost is in the number of tiles. Uh, the way of writing it so it's actually it would have been much better to look at the right sides uh, the documentation but it is written in terms of the uh, lettering uh, that is for the <coughs> basic linear algebra subroutines so the first letter d stands for double uh, so we are going to apply, so in a way this is a wrapper on top of the basic linear algebra subroutines. <coughs> okay, sorry. So now comes the essential part. We are going to um, generalize this to LU factorization and um, then also look at the data movements uh, so if you and here in some sense this lecture reboots i started with the picture of the column oriented uh, lu factorization if you start immediately with uh, the blocked uh, LU factorization, then you can derive the formulas by identifying the left side, so the given blocks, the given numbers, and then the right blocks. So you see that to derive the first step, so it's you can still look at this now, um, so now I have nine blocks, I have nine equations, so to compute L11 and U11, you see that we are doing an LU factorization. So if you look at the formulas column-wise, so once we have U11, then we can compute L21, L31 by doing the inverse of U11, or actually by solving many, many uh, upper triangular linear systems to compute the L21, L31 matrix. Now this is, and then you can go to the next column, you do again an LU, so now actually you can compute, you, you know L11, so you can compute U1,2, <clears throat> then you eliminate, so you can now see that matrix matrix multiplications are extremely important. Uh, they are very basic building blocks, even though here this is for triangular matrices that you are going to multiply. And in each step you're going to do an LU factorization on each diagonal element. Um, 
after the elimination. So we can read the formulas column by column or we can read them row by row. So if you look at the first row, after you have computed L11, you can actually proceed to computing U1,2. So seeing this, we've introduced task graphs earlier in the lecture. And actually in this part um, of the topic, as I started teaching this uh, a while ago at the beginning, I was introduced to task graphs uh, right from this here. So with a task graph, there is a lot of parallelism here. So you don't need to restrict yourself to a column wise or a row wise reading of these equations, but you can uh, see that there is a much more parallelism coming up in this styled wise uh, computation. Okay, so we uh, distinguish now from the memory movements. Um, so we uh, will do the override. So if we have computed L11 and U11, then we actually don't need A11 anymore. Uh, notice also that these are typically huge matrices and storing an extra copy of the LU factorization uh, in addition of the original data is often superfluous. Um, so you can save um, space and uh, the purpose of this slide is that you can look at uh, the computation not only in place, but you can also look at, look at it uh, in a right-looking sense. Um, so we are going to compute, so there's a picture that will follow of this algorithm. So here you can see we compute first uh, the first column and the first row. Um, so um, the formulas are explicitly given. So if you, and with their derivation, so you can see how the matrices are derived. Uh, so how to uh, compute the blocked matrices uh, in the uh, elimination step. and how also the uh, LU factorizations are still being done on the diagonal uh, matrix B2,2. Okay, so here are the pictures. Uh, so uh, the algorithm that was suggested, so and the algorithm is, uh, if you understand it for three by three blocks, then you will understand it for any size of blocks. Uh, so the algorithm that was derived or described on the previous slide is a right-looking uh, way of organizing. Um, so you will compute uh, the what is below the uh, current block on the diagonal and also what is at the right of the diagonal. But you can also organize it differently, so you can actually have a left-looking organization where you are computing what is uh, below, uh, uh, what is at the left of the current instead of what is below, what is uh, above, and what is to the left. So what is right look looking and left looking? So uh, what actually matters is that you're good looking. Uh, so what is best uh, good looking here is uh, what is best for uh, data access. Okay, so let's postpone this a little bit and let's go for the left uh, looking formulas. Uh, so here um, in the left looking formulas, we are, uh, you can see here, uh, we keep the original um, and postpone the update. Um, so, and uh, in some sense, these formulas um, 
I mean, mathematically, uh, they are, of course, correct. Uh, but at the first, it's actually counterintuitive that you would do it that way. But you can see that uh, we are kind of postponing the updating and we're kind of accumulating all the updates, uh, all the row eliminations uh, that we can do then at once. So I hope that the point here is that uh, what we can do here is that we will avoid that we have to update the same tile multiple times. So the size of the matrix is also kind of grows here. So th th that's another way of looking why the left looking formulas will be the good looking formulas, that the size of our matrix actually starts to grow. Uh, um, so and actually you will uh, not touch a block anymore once it is fully processed. So if you now look at the formulas, once you have computed u 2,2, you will actually, you can kind of keep it there. Um, so and in the previous right looking formulas, we were actually still working with b3,3 or b 2,3 when we did the eliminations. So we actually postpone the eliminations. Okay, so uh, the formulas uh, again come from an LU factorization and the updates uh, for the triangular system solving. So the formulas are written as the inverse of a lower triangular matrix. In practice, we will solve many lower triangular systems. Um, you can see the update formulas, so the products of the matrices by the vectors. And then also the pivoting here is uh, specified. So in some sense we postpone the pivoting, but you can see that here the pivoting is also happening when you are placing the matrices back in memory. Okay, so now comes the uh, pseudo code for the tiled LU factorization written in uh, the primitives. Uh, so we have the, um, actually you should look uh, at the left and to the right. Uh, so the right is the documentation. At the left is kind of the shorthand. Um, so if you would look at the code itself, you will see these calls to the basic uh, linear algebra subroutines uh, libraries. And uh, the, the main point again, and that is not obvious now if you look into the pseudocode, is that uh, this is a left looking algorithm. So it's uh, progressing with the main loop, the K, and the K goes up to the number of blocks P, the number of tiles in one, um, so we have now a P by P matrix, and we progress with our K index uh, to the left. Um, okay, uh, so that is the uh, basic introduction to how it works, um, a very summary uh, description. Let's now go, go to the software part. Uh, so there is the Plasma uh, software library um, that where these principles of left looking um, and using the basic building blocks of the uh, BLAS has been developed. Um, Plasma is a more reductive library than the LA pack, um, uh, at least uh, as I understood historically. Um, so it is free and open source um, software uh, designed for shared memory uh, multiprocessors. Um, I'm describing here the uh, basic version the original version. Um, here you see the principles. Um, in some sense, this is one of the slides which could have come earlier, but 
in this lecture, I try to be self-contained. So starting from what is LU in the beginning. Uh, so here is the um, current uh, parallel linear algebra um, view on things where we have organized the uh, basic linear algebra into layers. Um, and the layers are level 1, level 2, level 3, correspond to the uh, cost. Uh, so we have the um, level 1, which are essentially linear cost in the dimensions. The level 2 are the operations that are um, quadratic cost. And then you have the cubic cost routines. The KMN uh, allows here for flexibility. Um, you see the uh, linear solvers and the updates actually uh, go with this. Um, in an earlier lecture, uh, we did the tensor cores. Uh, so the tensor cores actually are uh, implementing the first level 3 blast operation as listed here. Um, Okay, um, so um, I was introduced to directed cyclic graphs uh, via this parallel um, linear algebra routines. So this is an application here now in this lecture. In the course earlier, when we talked about uh, parallel shared memory uh, algorithms. We introduced directed uh, cyclic graphs also there as a tool to define uh, the um, parallelism in, an, in a particular algorithm. So in particular, uh, the nodes and the graphs are what the tasks are. And here this corresponds to calls to the basic linear algebra subroutines. The edges represent the dependencies between the tasks. Uh, so which uh, task should come after another task or which task comes before another task. There is a critical path, um, a critical path, there are many critical parts. Uh, so that's actually the shortest path that connects the first node to the last node. And that will determine the limitation on the, on the parallelism. So this is a very nice formalism to describe this. And with the task scheduler, uh, once you define the dependencies, then you can submit this to uh, an execution. Um, so the original uh, plasma libraries were actually designed with their own um, runtime libraries to map the tasks onto the threads. Um, I understand that the current versions have defaulted to use an OpenMP. So OpenMP provides a high level uh, formalism to do this. Uh, here is another advertisement uh, for a great tutorial. So the slides you can find online. I wish I could make slides like that. Um, so here is also the uh, notion of uh, the critical part illustrated. Um, so a picture that I stole from these tutorial slides. Uh, this also contains uh, a lot more information than we can cover in this course here. So there is the plasma, but there is also the magma library uh, to do this on a GPU. And uh, these tutorial slides from 2017, if I remember correctly, uh, mentioned performance levels on Pascal, on the GPU Pascal, with the magma library up to 4 teraflops uh, for matrices of the right sizes. Okay, uh, here is an example. So I do not list, uh, I do not post any source code for this lecture. Uh, the examples that are be running come from the demonstration libraries. Uh, here you see one of the examples uh, on a two core, uh, you see 10,000 by 10,000 matrices. Uh, it does a Koleski factorization on this. Um, it also computes the 
uh, residual. Um, and here, actually, the residual, in, in my taste, is a bit large, uh, 10 to the power minus uh, 3. So it's also, uh, we have the residual that is normalized. So that is the uh, residual and then divided by uh, the norms of the matrices. So it's a scaled residual. Now, the, the point of it is, of course, that uh, this is standard software. Uh, it installs very easily, um, and it gives, of course, really great results. So you see with two cores, uh, the wall clock time is uh, 2.4 seconds. Uh, the user CPU time is almost twice as much. Um, here are the wall clock times on um, for dimension um, 10,000 again. Um, two cores, four cores, eight cores, 16 cores. Um, this is a computer that's still up and running, um, bought in 2014, also with uh, fairly original versions of Plasma. Again, a great uh, result. Uh, you see excellent uh, speed ups with uh, standard uh, software uh, with, with, with um, basic uh, problems. Koleski factorizations, which are typically uh, one of the basic building blocks also in applications. Okay, uh, for the last five minutes, I will say something about uh, CUDA. Um, so there is the Magma library uh, that I certainly do not want to sweep under the rug. Uh, but if you have a GPU uh, from NVIDIA, then the software development kit contains uh, basic libraries. And in a way, the last lecture we talked about the FFT, what I there actually forgot to mention was also the fast Fourier lab library on NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, so with this, I fixed this uh, omission. So if you have to, so the message is again, if you ever have to solve linear systems on a GPU, look at the standard libraries that are often coming pre-installed almost if you take the trouble of installing uh, once you have your computer and often it is already pre-installed uh, on your computer if you buy from the right vendor so there are turnkey uh, vendors out there so what is the q solver library it is a essentially an application programmers interface um, so it has already done all the hard work for you uh, and uh, you just have to run it, uh, which I will do, uh, which I have done. So what is the summary here? It's based on the CUDA BLAS uh, and also on, the, on its sparse version, version for sparse matrices. It has several uh, application programmers interfaces, sparse, dense, single and multiple GPUs. Uh, it contains also high level um, operations. So eigenvalue problems and singular value decompositions are also <coughs> are also supported. In a way we have spent a lot of time on device memories on GPUs for matrix matrix multiplications. I hope that uh, this lecture made somehow intuitively clear that if you can phrase things in the basic elementary blocks, then it matters about launching the right kernels at the right times. So I do not want to uh, dismiss a lot of hard work that went into the development of these libraries, but in essence, we have covered uh, the main algorithms, uh, the principles. Okay, so look into the folders uh, for the <coughs> CUDA libraries, and uh, there is one basic example that will demonstrate the capabilities for LU, QR, and Koleski all at once. Uh, so um, the matrix comes from a benchmark, um, 
So there is the Florida Sparse Matrix Collection. So the great state of Florida is known for many great things, but uh, there is the Sparse Matrix Collection. So it uh, uses examples from that. And uh, this is, of course, a dense linear solver. It will um, transform it into a dense format. Uh, there is also something numerically here. So I mentioned that uh, with the plasma library, the residual was kind of large. Well, sparse matrices are often also better conditioned. Uh, very intuitively, if you have uh, fewer and fewer uh, numbers, there are fewer and fewer errors that you can make. Uh, that's kind of an intuitive uh, way. So this is a 900 by 900 matrix. So normally you would have 900 to the power or two non-zero elements, but uh, there are very fewer ones. So you see what this Volta GPU has to go through. It's a five-step process, and uh, it will call Koleski. So, and um, here is where the numerical analysis comes in. Uh, so whenever we solve uh, a linear system, we compute the residual, which is also known as the backward error. Uh, we have actually now solved a problem that is at the distance of 10 to the power minus 13, very close to the machine precision. Relatively speaking, taking the norms of the matrix and the solution vectors into account, you see that we have a solution that is uh, accurate up to the machine precision. Very good indeed. Okay, um, so I'm at the end of this lecture. Um, one of the goals of this course is that you get um, a guide to the software. So there is the plasma for parallel uh, linear algebra subroutines. Um, here are the main papers that are describing it. I have um, the middle reference. Uh, this is where you can read more about the left looking, the right looking. Um, that's the essential idea for how to build efficient um, parallel shared memory linear algebra. Uh, the last reference is a classic by now. We have cited already twice. Um, this is the third time that I'm citing this. So, in a way, uh, it provides you some guidelines to the literature in this area. But most importantly for applications, I hope that I have um, given you some pointers to uh, good software libraries. In the original textbook that we are following, so my edition dates back from 2006, uh, parallel linear solving is described in the 11th chapter. Um, so there are three different ways of uh, looking at this course. Um, so I mentioned OpenMP. Uh, so we have seen earlier on this course uh, that with OpenMP you can list uh, the dependencies in the task space. Uh, so we have seen a very small snippet of the OpenMP uh, documentation that does a blocked matrix matrix multiplication, uh, where you can write them pseudo code, uh, almost pseudo code, uh, but it's actual code, uh, where you can list the dependencies with the in out clauses. And in some sense, this is not really... So the first exercise looks a bit like a joke, given that I wanted to point you at the standard libraries. But uh, you can go back to where we have seen earlier in the course, the OpenMP code in particular, and uh, look for how you can define the pseudocode algorithms with the OpenMP formalism and get some uh, um, performance out of this. The p-threads, um, that's really for uh, the hardcore system um, developers. Um, I don't want to dismiss this either. You can also look at the Intel threading building blocks. And what is forgotten here is the Julia. Uh, so we've seen task-based uh, parallelism with Julia. Um, it might be that you can get from the high-level uh, implementations that we have seen here 
close to, so there is the blast, and in some sense, I should actually have typed up this exercise. Uh, so there is a there is a, almost a direct access to the parallel blast from within Julia. So um, it's quite possible that you can go from the pseudo code to quite a performance um, um, library. So that is the do-it-yourself uh, exercise type, first type. Second type of exercise is the derivation of the formulas. Um, so I sketched at a very high level in these slides the algorithms. In, in some sense, exercise two should become before exercise one. So if you do the exercise one, then it would actually be, uh, you have already done exercise two. Um, exercise three is in some sense the first exercise that should have been recommended. Uh, take one of these samples. So I mentioned here the plasma library, but also the coup solver, uh, 900 by 900, why 900? Uh, so try to experiment with the dimensions a little bit. Uh, try to pick your own uh, collections of matrices. Uh, this gives you some first-hand experience with the APIs. Okay, I hope that this lecture was interesting, despite its rather fragmented and uh, fragmented tre treatment. I cannot point at all the directions, and I certainly have om omitted many uh, important uh, developments. But nevertheless, I hope that this gave a good introduction to parallel linear algebra.